a whole witch and you were taking attitude with her just because she was playing nice. Okay. Too many of y'all. Too many of y'all mistake niceness for weakness. Mm, and now your ass on the floor dead. <laughs>it's your girl Aisha aka Geek XX Chic and we are back with another reaction to Motherland Fort Salem we're now to episode 8 which is called Petra's Favorite Pen so in the last episode the biggest event that happened was Rael returning from being inside the mycelium she was given a choice by her mother to either stay in the mycelium and live in kind of an idyllic but fancy or fantasy world where she could no, you know, no longer be hurt and she could be with her mom forever or go back to the real world, which was wrought with a lot of dangers and problems. And her mother basically said that if she ends up getting fatally hurt again in the real world, the mycelium would not be able to bring her back again, which is probably very pointed that she said that to her. So I don't know if she anticipates that happening or not, but interesting warning. Raelle understandably said, no, I got to go back. Like girl, I'm like 19, 20 years old. What you mean? My life's over. <laughs> So she went back and obviously she has other reasons beyond that. She has people she loves and she wants to fight for this world she's in. So that makes sense. We also see that Marielle's mom was able to stop all the drilling that was happening in the mycelium at different points around the world. And so the mycelium is even able to heal for the time being. And in the meantime, um, Alder is going to continue on her quest to find all the last piece. I think she's down to one piece of the last of the first song. So one last piece of the first song is what I was trying to say. <laughs> so I think that piece might possibly be with the Camarilla. So it'll be interesting to see how they're going to get their hands on that. In the meantime, the session witches are preparing for an invasion, which already started. Uh, some of the militaries already crossed in basically because they harbored these fugitives. There was a bro um, a breach of the treaty. And of course, the Camarilla used this as a reason to go in there and ideally have the witches go against each other and take each other out while also getting rid of the session witches. But Thankfully, they had a heads up and we see that Abigail and Adil have chosen to join the rebel army, I guess you could say. And then finally, we saw that Scylla turned herself in in order to take the army away and distract them long enough to get the fugitives basically to safety. But the witches warned her that where they're going to take her is not going to be just a regular jail. She's actually going to be taken to Camarilla headquarters where they're obviously going to do some terrible things to her. So obviously Rael is going to prioritize rescuing Scylla before a lot of things. And I do hope that Scylla doesn't get hurt in this effort to save everybody else, but we'll have to see because Nick does out there and she joined up with Anacostia. So lots of things are in motion right now. I'm ready to get into this episode, but before I do, it's your first time on my channel. Welcome. Thank you so much for coming. I do reactions on this channel if you like reactions to shows like these with people like me, I'd appreciate it if you joined this coven by hitting that subscribe button and hitting the notification bell so you can know when I do more uploads. And if you've been here before, welcome back. Thank you so much for coming back. Hopefully you've joined the family. And if you haven't already, please do so today. All right, that out of the way, guys, let's get into the episode right about now. Ooh, this looks so Canadian. I feel cold already. <laughs> Tally's like, I guess I'll follow the danger. Don't get that Stop. smile. You're in a memory, honey. Yeah, ask for it, so you can't get mad. Hey, I wonder if those men are still there today. Oh. Well, that's not a very good spell. We need to teach her how to do ones that don't get her dead. Did the song lead you to her? So she's still frozen? I mean, she'll be well preserved. How do you know the first song can't stop it? It's we not about don't, knowing. but what other choice do we have? So if we thaw this witch out, are we assuming she's still alive? <laughs> I mean, it's a long ass time to be frozen. Even though her body's preserved, I feel like, actually, we don't know. I guess it's like ancient cryogenesis, right? And I guess if there was anyone who can bring her back, it'd be older. She could probably use the mycelium to wake her up somehow, if, even if it's temporary. Wait until you actually need her to see something useful. Then she saw, oh, it's hazy. I don't know. I mean, it would actually be very annoying to be some, with somebody you can see like a few minutes into the future. You'd like be, basically never be able to win an argument. You'd never be able to like fake them out. <laughs> it'd be so annoying. What are you doing wandering around here, Army? Looking for you. What's that? Did she not think that she'd seen that face? But the mycelium is nowhere near. Can't travel through glaciers. Oh, 
Well, that's not very witchy. How is snow a problem? You're a steward. Leave me behind if you have to. If I return without you, your unit will blame me. Maybe you should like record a message so she has that to bring you back because she's just saying, I can't be handling the wrath of both Abigail and Rael, okay? They're so annoying. The soldier we detained in Sioux territory last week. So? Oh. Do you know where she is? Start talking. Okay, calm down. Did she look like she was going to hold back? God, Abigail, dial back, girl. She's so angry. Wow, that is atrocious. I think I read that witches Witchy. have extremely unrefined palates, sir. Oh, you think that's a dig? And yet our troops are being held back by some half-assed, taped-together session militia. Led by Thelma Bearkiller, who I assure you does not do anything. Half-assed, half -assed. bitch. When I bring in your daughter and her little friends, I just might be inclined to be lenient. Because we will bring them in. Oh, you okay. threatening her daughter? You thought that's going to make her compliant. Oh, <laughs> you brought out the mama bear. What do we do? Time to wake the witch. Wake the witch. Aren't you going to wake up everybody else, though? Anyways, it's not like you can't beat them up. You're not asking for anything. Scylla needs us. She's one of us now. Oh, progress. A couple episodes ago, you were telling her to go to... It feels like, um, Get excuse me, I thought we had a deal about having a baby. That can't happen if you're... Okay. I assume you're looking for President Wade. What a scoundrel that Marshall is. Taken off in the middle of the night with such precious U.S. cargo. Oh, don't worry. He had other reasons. Why not try to help put out the fire for once in your damn life? She was military at one point. And that's the best I can do. But Nikta, this is a fight you do need to get into, sis. I understand your aversion to the military, but it's so much bigger than that right now. It's just so much better than, bigger than petty bulls. They have scanners, dampeners, reflective armor. Everything designed specifically to stop our work. Yes. What if we can distract them without work? Blow stuff up! We like blowing stuff up! Relax. <laughs> Dill, you know you hot when you use that hand to hand? <laughs> yeah. He's like, you don't always gotta save me, you know. So Tally's gonna be one of the first stewards. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh there's a transfer. So where does Abigail fit in? Earth and Sky, first song transfer. It's been dark for so long. Oh, that's creepy. Where were you centuries ago? Well, it depends on how far back. I might not have been born yet. Here to take from me, or perhaps instead, I'll take from you. Tally? Tally! Damn. Well, Tally might have seen that she wasn't leaving this thing. Because spilling guts is my thing. <sighs> God, men who think it's really cool to beat up on girls just aren't ever cool or funny or witty. We blocked your little wind and whispers in here. You think you can block the witch bomb? Oh. What did you say? You're alive as each individual nerve is consumed. You're essentially being eaten from the inside out. Perhaps She's like, oh, this is like a duet now. Let me join. I just worked here. <laughs> He's like, minimum wage, man. Minimum wage. <laughs> Faster. No offense, but we can't trust your ass. And you were willing to, you were very much willing to throw rocks at her. So even if you were just working here, you enjoyed it a bit too much. Okay, quick reunion. Let's go, ladies. Oh, no, we're doing some sword in the stone. You better let her know, Queen Arthur. Mm -hmm. Time to go. We're not leaving without it. Yeah, she's like, you almost tried to kill me, so now I'm gonna take this song by force. We're just gonna ask you nicely. Hold, we're in the line of fire! Ah! 
Well, either way, that was going to go badly. I mean, I don't know what to say. Either way, it was going to go badly if you guys can't take out those jerks. Y'all need some slingshots or guns. And then there are others who sit quietly, hands behind their backs, just waiting. Hmm. And undo the knot. You think you're being so theatrical. Oh my God, no one asked you to monologue. Nick, safe to say you wind up solidly in the latter category. Yes? Mm-hmm. I don't know why you got fresh with a, with a witch. Of ancient lines. Make it explode. Make it explode. We are called. You're gonna have a whole heart attack. <laughs> Ugly. She'd had enough of you. Seriously, this is a whole witch and you were taking attitude with her just because she was playing nice. Okay, too many of y'all. Too many of y'all mistake niceness for weakness. Mm, and now your ass on the floor dead. There you go, starting to get smart. She knew that was gonna happen, but at least she went out on her own terms. By the way, not everything's direct work, bitch. You're about to find out. It's just hell. Just walk it off. Okay, wait till one of them gets you in the face, bitch. <laughs> Was that walk it off? Let's see you do it, sis. Oh, sorry, army people. You should have ran a long time ago, though. Don't mess with Abigail. The bellwethers are on a tear today. It's too late. That was a hell of a blast she got, so a lot of them got thrown pretty hard. When she latched onto me, I could see her memories. There was so much pain. Did you hear her song? What good is sight when there's nothing to look forward to? Valid point. It might be good for me to see what's right in front of me for a change. All right, I guess so. We all knew you're gonna be a steward the second you came into this cave. You will be able to see the world again. See beyond. See a future. It's better. Let me touch your nub. Kind of gross, but I'll touch it. It worked. And then once you save the world, come back and take it back. Cause she did, what she didn't say for? She did. <laughs> Impressive. Can't you do that for yourself and like leap across? All their time. Go, she's fine. Your orders are to remain here. My orders were to quit slow playing. So which is it? I'm not doing enough or I'm doing too much. Hmm. Make up your mind, Mr. President. Quickly. Who's Colonel Jarrett? Beg your pardon? You heard me. Oh, he I had haven't a seen or heard from him. Chest. Show chest problem. Ah, oh, Mr. President. Gollum. Oh. Or even better. Oh, yeah, I guess Gollums can't talk. I don't know. Hey, what's up? That spree works helpful, huh? A message? Maybe Nick to changed your mind. You know it's for you. Not gonna lie, that works kind of freaky. A little freaky leaky. And when we do find them, we can start talking about my pardon. Fair enough. I mean, okay, I'm 50-50 because technically she should go to jail because she killed a lot of innocent people, but at this point. How many more Lupe Cortezes have to die? They're all here because of us. And yes, I'm aware that we will be put on trial for murder and treason. But Tally's a steward. She. If there's even a chance that our surrender can provide some it peace. It won't. It won't. Don't we have to try? It won't. Tally. Why hasn't she told any of them that all? I mean, that the president's daughter's alive either. Wado, bear killer. Look at you. The Nadago Ha'i, the weather. Bear Killer's such a good last name. No way to see what's coming. 
I'm not even sure I don't want to see this one. I don't think Tally should be with you. Y'all could have just lied and said that you found her body days ago, though they'd want to see it. But you can make a golem anyway. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> Cute. All right. Enough sappy shit. Let's go. I just wish there was more time. Well, there you know. Is. There's always someone who knows the show. There could be. You never know. You never know. Will you marry me? I feel like this is really, yes. really, yes. really forward planning. You literally have a witch bomb in your body that could go off at any time. Can we just worry about that first? And the fact that you're going to now give it to the very enemy that, okay. Tally with the first song, Rael being the witch bomb, going into custody. I just don't see how this is a good idea. I feel like this is a very, very bad idea. Especially when you know that the Camarilla is running things. I... Heads high. <laughs> They're almost in height order. That's funny. Aw, mama's trying not to cry. All U.S. Army personnel will stand down. This occupation is over. Is it? I mean, I suppose it does stop the witch on witch killing. I do understand the reasoning in that regard. However, I still think, as I said earlier, having two very valuable assets to this particular war, the bigger war that's going on between witches and humanity, is not the smartest idea because now the government is controlled by the Camarilla. And obviously, they're not going to sit back and allow the military to handle Three, no, well, I mean, well, not still is kind of, but you know, three high value witches at this point. But anyways, that was episode eight, which was called um, <laughs> Petra's favorite pen. And um, yes, Will played. Uh, she broke that pen, but it was worth it. It was definitely worth it. Like I said in the episode, that man had a lot of nerve, you know, and this is a thing, you know, this whole show since season one has touched somewhat mildly, but sometimes a lot more boldly on how they still, despite the fact that you've got women who are the stronger witches in this world and in powerful positions like Alder being the head of the military and a female president, despite all of that, there is still a lot of misogyny in this world and it's still very strong. And you can't tell me that a good chunk of this Camarilla uprising is not based in said misogyny. Men throughout history have never done well when women start to empower themselves, when they start to show some semblance of independence, strength, uh, brains, like you name it. Like anything that they feel is challenging to their misogynistic authority has typically been met with a lot of resistance. And as we saw with that poor witch from way back when in the beginning of the episode, a lot of violence and often death. And, you know, a lot of people believe that the Salem witch trials back in the day, that some of the things that fueled it was that there were women that were actually showing signs of being independent, smart, innovative, and that there were a lot of men that got scared by the idea of women being able to be independent from them. So they started to use terms like witches in order to um, justify the horrible things that they did to them. But anyways, we're at a very interesting place here. I kind of knew from the second that we heard Tally say that she was going to go with Alder to go find this witch that was frozen in time that she was probably going to become a steward. I wasn't sure if her sight was going to be the thing. Like I said, all the members of the Bellwether unit have typically been given some kind of big purpose. And I thought maybe Tally's was to be able to see, we know what was going to happen or give some kind of amazing insight into the future. But now we see she's become a steward. <laughs> now she's become a steward. So we've got Rael who's got the witch bomb slash mycelium connection and power within her. We've got now, Tally, who is a steward of the song, so therefore she has to survive in order to sing this song. And like I said, I'm still not sure what Abigail's part is. I know that she is, like the only thing that they've brought up about her is this union of earth and sky. Now we've seen that she isn't one badass sky witch. We saw the way she took care of those military people in this episode, and we know that's just a touch of what she's capable of. But it makes me wonder, because remember back last season, Abigail kept having these dreams about this massive storm. And of course she saw that one of her ancestors was able to create a storm that was so big that it basically like ended a war and she was trying to recreate that song it didn't go well for her but I think she's she kind of had a bit of a almost premonition that she might be able to do something pretty crazy with her sky powers. So I don't know. I'm thinking it has to be something with her and Adele potentially that is her part, but I just can't think that she's going to be the one member of the Bellwether unit that's not going to have a special thing when they've kind of gone through a lot to show that they are 
both, or sorry, all three of them are pivotal to the future of which kind, I would think. Like they've been kind of hinting at that since season one. So I keep wondering what Abby's thing is. I'm hoping it becomes a little bit clearer in the next episode or so because we don't have a lot left now, but we'll have to see. Uh, what else happened here? Yeah, I mean, coming back to Petra's pen, that scenario, I just want to touch on it. I kind of already talked about it, but I thought that it was a really cool way that they did that scene with her with the pen, tapping, casting the spell without him even realizing and taking care of her little tail because she was sick and tired of his ass, always on her ass. And what I loved about that is, as I said before, the misogyny, men who are insecure don't often handle being around powerful and secure women very well. They look at that as threats. And this man who was tailing Petra, outside of the fact that he was obviously a bigoted Camarilla, I do think that he didn't like the idea that she's this person who's supposed to have more power than him. And so every moment that he had to kind of belittle her, talk down to her, think he could talk about her, it was all just, it was adding up, right? Petra was doing her best to just take it and do what she needed to do to protect her witches, her fellow witch kind. But these men, kept pushing her and I think you know obviously the breaking point was Blanton showing up and telling her that she basically threatening Abigail to her face in her house you know like that's like that's when I said I'm like that's a breaking point you brought you brought out the mama bear she probably would have put up with a lot when it came to her but as soon as you start talking about doing something to Abigail she's like okay <laughs> okay that's the way you want to play let me get rid of your little pet and let me just let you know that I know how to bite back because you think that I don't know how to say nothing. You think that because I don't say nothing, I don't know how to say nothing. And like I said, many times in this world, people mistake kindness or niceness for weakness. And those things are not true. They're not mutually exclusive. There are people who choose mildness, who choose kindness, but it does not mean they're not capable of savagery if necessary. And Petra let him know today. That man now knows, but you know what? He's known from the afterlife because he pushed her too damn far. Now, should she have done it? Probably not. It was a bit reckless, but sometimes you'll need to learn things. And, you know, obviously he thought that all work that was done had to be done by casting spells or saying things. He don't know that there's all kinds of spells and witchcraft that even the Camarilla don't even know about. That's why they've been catch, cap, yeah, capturing witches all this time because there is so much work they don't know of and they're probably never going to know all the work out there. But digressing, he learned that day. And I love, like I said, that scene was really well executed. And I think Petra's taking back a little bit of the authority that she can. But obviously there's a lot of at play here, right? I know she's not directly scared of Blanton, but we know that Blanton's not standing alone. There's a whole Camarilla art army out there, likely wearing that reflective gear, likely ready to march at any given moment, you know, at a moment's notice. And of course, there are still a lot of witches that are out there that either are under the control of the military or are potentially in the custody of the Camarilla. And like all of that's going through Petra's mind. So she's gotta be very careful with how far she pushes, but I'm glad she kind of let Blanton know that he can't just be rolling up in her face all the time. And that she ain't really scared of him. Like he needs to understand. It's like, sir, your little fake office and your little suit, don't scare me. I don't care if you ta- if you taller than me. You know I could literally crumple you like a bug if I needed to. So just sometimes you gotta remind people, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, outside of that, of course, we saw that the girls decided to surrender finally to the military. I, as I said in the beginning, I do have my concerns about it. I don't think it's necessarily a best move, but I do know that their their moves are limited. They don't want to see more people die. Abigail, of course, was very deeply affected by seeing that soldier die who she kind of bonded with earlier on. It sucks because it's true. I, I agree with that poor girl. Like her death kind of was meaningless in the sense of the reason she died. You know what I mean? Like she died trying to protect herself and her fellow witches, but also it was like, it was just such a messed up situation, right? Like she kind of felt like if I was going to die, I thought it was going to be like protecting my country or protecting my, my fellow witches. And that's really not what ended up happening. I kind of died for a meaningless standoff really, you know, and it's, I understand why that would have hit Abigail, especially because she is such a born and bred military person, but her death really wasn't meaningless. I mean, she did the best that she could in what was kind of an impossible situation, but I completely understand where she was coming from. And I loved Abigail's revenge. She let them know. I mean, I like it. Adil kind of gets that look like, damn, you really are lethal with that guy thing every so often. 
But um, I think that they're right. Like there really is only so much they can do. The military, because it was so public, like they did with having the, the press all see the apprehension of these fugitives, they do have to pull out of the session for now, at least publicly, which will definitely give the session witches some time to breathe. But like I said, it doesn't really fix the overall problem, which is that they're still going to try to oppress witches. We know there's still a lot of congressional things happening that's going to allow a lot of continued abuse of the of the witches. So I think that's something that they're going to have to figure out. But for now, at least they're going to be going back to Fort Salem. We'll see what happens. We don't now that they're looking for the president. We know that they also have the ace in the hole, which is that uh, Blanton's daughter is still in the basement of Fort Salem, very much alive. And so I think that's the Trump card they're waiting on, though. I think they want to wait and have it where they bring back the old president and show that the daughter's still alive. I think that'll be two things that will definitely throw a huge monkey wrench in the political side of the Camarilla. But I also feel like something like that is also going to have to be played the right way because if it's not, they're just going to mobilize the army that they've already created to try to take out the last of the witches. But the witches have gained a little bit of ground. The fact that they stopped the drilling and that the mycelium is healing, the fact that they are now one more piece away now, actually, I was wrong at the beginning of the episode, so they're actually one piece away now from getting the first song. They now have, you know, um, Rael back, but she may possibly still be a witch bomb. We'll have to see, but we have a little bit more uh, ground on the witch side. And of course, now with the spree helping out as well, and I think the, se the session wishes will help where they can to... The witches are in a better place than they were at the beginning of the season for sure. They have more intel, they're more unified, and they actually have a goal. So we'll have to see how things go in these next couple of episodes. I have to think that we're going to get to some type of culmination point, and I feel like there is still one last Hail Mary that the Camarilla are going to pull, but we're not going to see what that is probably until those girls are under the custody of the Camarilla, which I still think is going to happen. So we'll have to wait and see what happens, but I enjoyed this episode a lot, and I hope you guys enjoyed watching along with me. If you did, I'd appreciate it if you liked this video and left some comments below and we will see you in the next video.